Does Halloween give you anxiety? Well, if it does, you're not alone. What should be such a fun and for lack of a better pun, spooktacular time in a child's life, it can be very overwhelming for them and moms because right? They lean on us. They look to us for how to have a good time and to set the expectations of an event or of a season in a time of where it should be exciting. And there's all about costumes and candy. It can truly be very overwhelming and full of challenges when it comes to planning out a successful Halloween. But mama, I want to encourage you to fear not because in this episode, I've got a cauldron full of trip tips tricks and hacks to ensure your toddler has a spooktacular and successful Halloween adventure and mamas too. So go ahead, get out your pen and paper, or of course, if you're like me, a little more tech savvy, take out the notes on your phone and get ready to take down some tips to make sure that Halloween is fun and memorable and a safe experience for your little one. Let's go. Hey mama, welcome to the Energized Mama podcast. Do you want a better work-life balance and more time and energy? Do you find yourself thinking, how can I add more hours into the day? Or are you Googling how to deal with mom guilt and can my marriage survive toddlers? Do you wake up with big goals only to feel overwhelmed and defeated when you have no one to help you and your littles aren't listening to you again? Hey, I'm Cheyenne. I too was an exhausted mom away from the help of my family. I too felt constantly drained with a strong-willed toddler and wished I could find balance between being a wife, a mom, stepmom, and entrepreneur. I wanted more energy to give myself and my husband, to discipline my kids confidently, and incorporate faith into our home. All the things, right? But I kept telling myself that I couldn't do it feeling this exhausted and without a community supporting around me until I found a healthy balance of endless energy in raising Jesus-loving littles. In this podcast, you will find that too. You will find time and energy boosting tips and tricks, guidance for disciplining your littles, and what to do when you have no help so that you will find balance between all your roles. Stop feeling drained and learn to trust your own mom tuition. Time to grab those headphones, pour that green smoothie, and get ready to get your daily energy boost. I've got you, mama. I'm not sure what caused you to click on this episode today, but I am guessing that you're a mom of a little one who maybe is about ready to enjoy and embark on celebrating their first Halloween. I am there too. My son Mason is three and a half, and I remember last year he was kind of into Halloween or at least curious. He started to notice the different decorations going up around town and starting to see the excitement in the air, but he really didn't quite understand the concept at two and a half. Now, flash forward a year later at three and a half, oh my goodness, he is just over the top excited. We cannot escape Halloween. It seems to be everywhere. It's in lawn decorations. It's in stores when you go. There's pumpkins everywhere. There's fall festivals, right? Even your church may be talking about a trunk or treating type of event. And around, you know, the age of three, four, and five, our kids start to get really imaginative. And this is something that we don't want to dull down. We want to embrace, right? And we want to encourage. So again, I'm so happy you've clicked on this episode because my goal is to help your toddler, your little one, have a successful Halloween. But you you too, mama, right? Because this is your child's childhood. You are building these foundational building blocks of what they're going to build their life experiences on, like no pressure, right? As if our, uh, us moms don't have enough to think about. So I want to ease your possible discomfort or stress that you have about this season and give you some tips that's going to make it more enjoyable for the both and just for all of you. So the first tip I have is just like any type of experience, new experience for a toddler, it's best to set the stage. What do I mean by that? Basically start the conversations and start them as early as possible. Whether you want to start September 1st or hopefully don't wait till October 30th, but begin explaining to your toddler in words that they can understand what Halloween is. Break it down for them. Think about things in their worlds that they understand. Maybe by this time you've started teaching your children vegetables or animals. So you can bring up things like pumpkins and corn, um, candy corn even, or spiders or things that are associated with Halloween in a way that you can talk about them. 
It's fun, it's exciting, but the unknown can be very overwhelming for toddlers. So as much as you can, again, set the stage and help them kind of know what's coming, what may be something they can expect, what they might be seeing all of a sudden outside or when they go into stores, or if they're in preschool, what topics could be involved in, in their preschool, even involve their preschool teacher. Maybe ask her, um, I know September is around the time when a lot of people start, maybe even August if you're uh, down in the South like I I am but get to know the curriculum ask your teacher what will you be doing to celebrate Halloween what won't you be doing what topics will be discussed so that you know you can prep and prepare your toddler the best that you can so one huge question that I've gotten a lot, especially in my private Facebook community that I have for Moms of Littles, uh, which by the way, totally open enrollment, it's free. You can actually come join us at the link below in my show notes. It's a great, wonderful place where moms just like you find the community that they desire online in a safe online environment where I allow moms just to get real. We just open up and we talk without judgment. And one question I continually get is, to trick or treat or not trick or treat. And it was such a hot topic this year that I actually did an episode on it, episode 80 that I've put in the links below, talk about trick or treating and also alternatives to trick or treating because sometimes trick or treating is maybe not aligning with your values, whether it be spiritual values or values to do with perhaps nutrition, because we know <laughs> trick or treating can be very unhealthy when it comes to that aspect. So if you're curious in alternatives to trick or treating, please definitely check out that episode below. But if you've decided with your family that trick or treating is something that you want to do, I've got a few things to point out and some tips for you to make it as easy and as memorable and a good experience as possible. So again, if you're deciding to trick or treating, first and foremost, you wanna plan your route, right? Know ahead of time where you are going to take your littles, especially for five and under, right? They're starting to explore their world and new places can be very overwhelming or scary. So research ahead of time where you're gonna take your child and it could be a great idea to take them there in the, you know, take them there um, before ch before Halloween, maybe a week or two before Halloween, take them around the route. You can either make it a thing where you drive around in your car and just point out the streets and the different houses you're gonna stop at, or it can be something that you do as say a little like walk, walk and, you know, talk with your child, like put them in the stroller, put them in your baby carrier and walk around and, and explain like, hey, we're gonna come here on Halloween night. We're gonna be in your costume. We're gonna have a bag. You're gonna go up to the the doors um, again setting that stage right not just for the Halloween season but for trick-or-treating specifically because it is a totally different concept than kids are used to right maybe you're already teaching your child about stranger danger don't talk to strangers well on Halloween night we're encouraging them to go up to strangers houses knock on doors and talk to a lot of strangers, right? Maybe this is why you're not too sure about trick-or-treating. It can be a very positive thing. In our household, I really encourage our kids to talk to what well, I guess we would label strangers, people they don't know, of course, with safety, you know, in mind, but meaning be kind, be friendly. And so trick or treating can be an awesome opportunity for this, but it is something that's out of your child's norm. So again, addressing them, uh, addressing this to them earlier, the earlier, the better, getting them talking about it, getting them, giving them the space to ask questions, right? Especially if your child's around three or four, they're probably in that why season. And so giving them the opportunity to ask why do we do this what is this about before you're actually in that moment with a lot of different kids around costumes lights candy all of that prepping that for them is a really really great idea now, when you go through this neighborhood, it could be a good time to see, you know, check out different street crossings, see where it's going to be safe for the kids to cross back and forth. What kind of lighting do they have? Um, because for kids, a lot of children under five, they are scared, of course, um, when it gets dark out and the darker it gets, the scarier and more crowded it can get for trick or treating and um, the lights go up, the big scary blow up thing. So maybe see if there's a trick or treating opportunity in a neighborhood neighborhood by you where they have a soft opening almost for trick-or-treating. I know some neighborhoods they offer where they emphasize for the younger kids, they can go start going trick-or-treating, you know, say between four and six, 
and then the older kids, you know, more school age, even, you know, middle school kids can go later. Check that out so that your kids can um, feel as comfortable as possible in this very unusual environment. Another thing you want to think about is, so you've got your trick-or-treating planned, you know where you're going to go. Well, what's probably the most important thing to your toddler at this point is going to be their costume selection. And I want you guys to memorize this little phrase that I'm going to give you. It's three words. It's comfort over complexity, right? I want to encourage you, mama, to choose a costume that's comfortable and easy to move in, right? I know that maybe you've been dreaming since before you were pregnant or the moment you saw that pregnancy test, oh my gosh, I can't wait to dress my little one up as this. Or maybe you're like me that you love to do family themed outfits and I'm all for it. But again, I'm here to help you have a successful Halloween. Maybe those more elaborate costumes are going to be better for when your child is more school age and five or over, but this episode is specifically for moms of toddlers of littles, right? So we want to make sure that your costume for your child is not too crazy. You want them to be able to get in and out of it if need be. So something that's a great idea is that to get your costume a few weeks ahead of time, if possible, if you're making a costume, trying it along as you go, but just make sure that you give them a costume trial before you go out on Halloween night. You don't want there to be a huge tantrum explosion when you're trying to get out the door because your child says this this doesn't fit me. This is uncomfortable. I don't like how this looks. This sticks me here. So again, when you do a costume trial, a little test run, you can help your child get used to wearing it. And then you can make any necessary adjustments if you need to in the future. Last little caveat that I'll share about doing a costume for a toddler. Sometimes this goes without saying, but I felt like I would just say it anyways is I want to just encourage you to tone down the spookiness when it comes to your toddler's costume. Now, I'm actually speaking to myself, right? I'm preaching to the choir because my son right now, he's quite obsessed with spooky. He, whenever you ask him, what does he want to dress up as? He'll say something like a spider or a zombie because even in kids programming, there are cute little Halloween episodes that our kids can watch that put in these scary characters. That's a whole nother episode I've got for you about how social media and how screen time is influencing our child's, you know, conception of Halloween. And I mean, could we all be real? The world in general. But again, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. But the thing is, my son has really, really, really wanted to be something scary. However, I know the moment that he would put that on or because we've experienced it here that there's been moments where he sees things like that at night and he gets a little more scared and he all of a sudden wants to abort mission and not do it or not be around those things. So I just want to encourage you, even if your kids want to be those things, maybe encourage them to, um, you know, think about something that they love in their life that they could wear instead, like an animal, a favorite character. I mean, oh my goodness, you can get every major character you see on TV or YouTube nowadays in different stores, uh, maybe different per- professions, right? Encourage your child to maybe check out, you know, how they can dress up to be a doctor or a firefighter or something like that. Um, just so that it's a good way um, to encourage your child to, again, enjoy this experience. I would also, you know, mamas, I would encourage you to role play, right? Role play with your, with your child. They are so in this season of make believe and having fun and using their imagination. So again, test out these costumes, give them some options, allow them to try different things. And then on the day of go with the flow, you know, I know maybe again, you've been planning these theme costumes for your family, but as we know, toddlers can change their minds like that. So no matter how great of a costume, I would have a couple options that your child can choose from the day of and just go with what they feel on that day. Cause what's more important, right? That you have these great, fantastic Instagrammable photos and that you guys all dress alike or that your toddler actually has a really great time that they're um, in the zone for having a great time, especially if you have other kids, if you have older or younger kids, you want your toddler um, to 
not ruin the experience if not need be, right? We all know we can't control toddlers' emotions. And what's really important, another another thing I wanted to make sure I said is to validate your child's emotions. Ultimately, we just have to be flexible in the Halloween season, in any season when we're raising littles, right? And if your child is so amped up and excited to go to trick-or-treating or to go to this fall festival and all of a sudden at the last minute, they're just not about it, just validate their feelings. Help them walk through it. Help them speak out their emotions. Ask questions. Try to get to the bottom of what is their apprehension? What are they scared about? And more than likely, it may be something very small that you can fix and adjust. But ultimately, you just want to make sure that your child feels comfortable And um, they feel like their needs are met in this season because a successful Halloween this time around is going to mean a more successful uh, season in the future when you can maybe do more of what you want and have it be a more grand experience. Right now, this is all about baby steps. Hey, mama, can you believe it's already October? I mean, it's going to be Christmas before we know it. And if you're anything like me, it's been quite a whirlwind of keeping up with the little ones, hasn't it? I have a question for you. Do you ever find yourself wishing there was a way to just stop feeling emotionally drained? You're not alone if motherhood sometimes feels like an emotional roller coaster. Do you also wish that you could just basically have more energy, you know, for your husband, for yourself, for life in general? Well, I promise you, mama, I've actually been in your shoes and I know what it's like to crave more, wanting more from life than just being a mom. It is a dream worth pursuing. I know what it's like to feel overwhelmed, that never-ending stress, wondering where to even start to make a change in your life. I know what it's like to lack those healthy habits, the ones that you really want to do and have, but you're kind of totally in the dark which ones actually make a difference long-term. I've also struggled to create a plan, you know, feeling completely lost in creating realistic, sustainable strategies for myself. And, you know, ultimately just doubting myself, doubting your energy, wondering if it's even possible to feel energetic while wrangling a household full of littles. But now, mama, I want you to imagine this. What if you woke up each day instead of feeling emotionally drained, but feeling refreshed with energy to spare? What if you had time for those cherished date nights with your husband? And what if me time actually became a regular part of your everyday routine? And what if you had a simple, tailor-made plan that brought back your energy and allowed you to be the vibrant mama that you long to be, all while at the same time giving your kids the love and care that they need? Well, I have great news for you. That's exactly why I created the More Energy Method. It's your customized blueprint to reclaim your life from the chaos and inject boundless energy into your daily routine. Here's what I'll teach you to decrease stress and increase energy. I'm going to give you practical strategies to make stress vanish and your energy soar. You'll have a super simple personalized plan that'll establish new energy boosting habits without taking time away from your kids or demanding huge commitments because right, who's got time for that? You'll walk away with crystal clear clarity. You'll know exactly what to focus on. A foolproof plan. You know exactly how to do it. And perhaps most important, confidence. You'll have the confidence to make these changes last. So if you're ready to stop feeling overwhelmed the moment you wake up, to feel rejuvenated throughout the day and go to bed satisfied, even as a busy mom of littles, now's the time to take the leap. During the entire month of October, I'm offering an exclusive deal, 10% off my course and three bonus trainings. Don't miss out, mamas. Head over right now to energyformoms.com to grab your exclusive offer today before it expires on November 1st. It's time, mama, to shed the stress, regain yourself, and have energy to spare for you, your husband, and a life beyond just your littles. Let's do this together, mama. All right, mamas, we've made it to my last few and final tips, and this is for you non-trick-or-treaters. So whether you've decided... Uh, We just don't want to go trick-or-treating. Maybe you've had a bad experience before. Maybe you as a family, just your values don't align with trick-or-treating. Or maybe you want to trick-or-treat, but that's not the only way you want to celebrate Halloween. Well, these next few tips are for you. So something that toddlers 
absolutely love is to be included. They love to feel like they are helping, right? And one way in the Halloween season that you can help them have a successful um, just season to feel good and confident and boost their confidence in themselves is to allow them to help you decorate and create a very fun environment. Again, you don't have to make it spooky, right? You don't want anything necessarily too gory or scary around your house that may frighten your children, but encouraging things like, you know, building a harvest wreath or something for your door or carving pumpkins, that kind of thing are things that your children will absolutely love and it will encourage a positive mindset around Halloween in general so that it doesn't have to be about the scary, the gory, the dark, anything like that. You can actually make this a really beautiful season of harvest and you can even do crafts and games and they can be indoor too. Maybe your neighborhood has unfortunately decorated really scary and your child's petrified to step outside. There's not much you can necessarily do there. So I think motherhood's all about the game of control, right? Focusing on what you can control, not on what you can't. And so if it's a little scary outside, especially on Halloween night and you don't want to trick or treat, do something fun inside. You could suggest, you know, um, having a kid-friendly Halloween movie night. Nowadays, there are so m there are so many options and so much content out there on on YouTube or on your different streaming devices where it's kid-friendly, it's fun, and it's basically a way to celebrate Halloween without the scariness, without the intensity of the dark, the ghoulish, and all of that. So, and last but not least, again, right, we've talked about it. I'm just going to emphasize it one more time that if you don't feel like necessarily trick or treating, or maybe it doesn't align with your, you know, family's spiritual values is look for local events. So many other moms and families are like you. They're kind of against this spooky, creepy, dark, demonic culture that's been created around Halloween. So there's a lot of activism in the communities now to try to offer families alternatives. Anything from pumpkin patches to parades or so many churches are now doing trunk or treats. So please get on the Googles, go Google and see what your community is doing. And then you can create really wonderful, positive memories that focus on having fun and enjoying the Halloween season without um, making it something that's going to traumatize or scare your child for the future. I have it, Mama. I hope you found my Halloween tips for your toddlers to have a successful Halloween for, hey, not just them, but yourself. I hope you found them helpful and inspiring. Remember, ultimately, Halloween is all about creating magical memories with your kids, right? And so just know that a little preparation and a whole lot of love, you can ensure that your toddler's Halloween is going to be literally a treat for the ages. And speaking of treats, don't feel overwhelmed when it comes to all that candy that you may get, whether it's through trick-or-treating or it's through a uh, trunk or tree or your children's school, set some boundaries. Set some expectations around the home. You know, you can always go ahead and set a limit to how many they have per day or say how many um, that they get to pick from the bag. A really quick last minute tip I have for you that I didn't want you to walk away without hearing is that I heard online recently that there's a mom that has kind of like an elf on the shelf idea of having a little semi spooky, cute little Halloween character, whether it's a, a sweet little princess ghoul or it's a bat that comes and takes the Halloween candy on Halloween night and leaves the child with three or four pieces and the rest goes away to some kind of magical fairy tale land. So um, you guys can create some kind of a story on your own. Maybe have your child's one of their favorite stuffed animals take it away. This family had the little character on the doorstep kind of doing their own trick or treating at night so that they came, they took the Halloween candy with them and then there you go. You have that problem solved of having all this extra sugar in your house and your child still gets to enjoy some of their candy, but not have it live on for ages. I think every mom and every dentist can say hallelujah there. So anyways, if you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, The Energized Mama. 
I'm all about helping you moms of littles have a successful motherhood, one that you feel like you're totally owning, one that you can connect and embrace your own mom tuition, and one that's going to energize you, not defuel you, but fuel you into being that woman of God and that mother that God's created you to be. And if you love this episode, please feel free to share it with other parents who are gearing up for Halloween. Your support truly means the world to me, and it allows me to help more moms, but also help to see what episodes connect with you so I can give you more content that helps you in your mother motherhood. So stay tuned for more exciting episodes coming up with parenting insights and tips. I have one more coming up next week that's all about Halloween and what to do with that Halloween candy. But until next time, stay safe, have fun, and make every moment with your little ones a boo to full adventure. That's right. Happy Halloween. Is infertility causing you emotional distress? How would you feel if I told you that you're not alone and that there is a brighter way out? I know, Mama, because I've been there. You'll learn how to reset your faith, your feelings, and your emotional twists and turns and take inspiration from stories from other women. I want you to grab your copy of I'm Fruitful, an infertility support magazine that will help you rekindle your faith after infertility, forgive yourself, and experience grace after such a challenging experience. Join their IG community at I'm Fruitful of supportive women who have been through the same thing as you, as me, and you'll never feel alone again.